Setting financial goals is a great way to get your year started off right. In this video, we'll provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to set financial goals for the new year. Please note, I'm not a financial advisor or accountant, and this video is for general educational purposes only. No official financial advice is being given. Feel free to pause the video to read the disclaimer or find the full disclaimer in the video description below. Step 1. Assess your current financial situation. This consists of two main parts, estimating your current debt and current savings, and preparing a budget using your current monthly income and estimated monthly expenses. You'll want to create a spreadsheet with one tab to track your current income and spending, and another tab to track the goals you set for the new year. Ideally, this should be done using Google Sheets or a Microsoft spreadsheet for efficiency. You can also use an app to track these if you prefer, but generally using a spreadsheet is much better for customization. Estimating your existing debt and the money you've already saved up is important in understanding what you're working with right now. For your debt assessment, that could include things like credit card debt, medical debt, student loans, a car loan, or a mortgage. Once you've identified the types of debt you have, look up how much you owe for each account. For your savings, this can include your checking and savings account balances, including any high yield accounts you may have, as well as any cash you may have saved up in your home. You can also factor in things like investments and your retirement savings as well. Again, for each fund, confirm how much money you have saved up. Next, you'll want to take a look at how much money you're earning and spending every month. For your current income, you'll want to include all your main streams of income, like your paycheck from your full-time or part-time job, any side hustles you have that consistently earn you money, and any passive income streams you have, like from renting out a room in your home, for example. If you're in an industry where it's hard to estimate your income, just break down your income from the past year into an estimated monthly income, if it's an accurate depiction of how much you typically earn. For your monthly expenses, try to take a look at the last 6 months of your expenses at the bare minimum, but looking back at the last 12 months is even better, so you can get a good idea of what you're spending money on throughout the year. Your expenses can include things like rent or mortgage payments, car payments, groceries, household and hygiene purchases, dining, gas, transportation expenses, student loan payments, credit card payments, bills and utilities, memberships and subscriptions, online shopping, childcare, and insurance. You'll also want to include an other category for all the miscellaneous purchases you may make throughout the year. For example, things like your car registration, medication costs, copays for doctor's visits, and gifts for birthdays or holidays. Step 2. Determine your main financial goals. Now that you've taken a good look at your current finances, it's time to determine what matters most to you. You'll want to make a list of 4 to 6 things you'd like to improve on with regard to your finances, and think about a few things you'd like to do in the next few years. Your financial goals could look like a few different things. It could be paying off debt, whether it's credit card debt, student loans, a mortgage, medical debt, a car loan, or a personal loan. It could also be saving up for a big expense, like saving up for a car, a down payment on a house, a vacation, retirement, an emergency fund, or a college fund for your kids. It could also be earning more income, like getting a raise at work, earning income from a side hustle, getting a better paying job, earning passive income, or investing. Or it could simply be lowering your overall monthly expenses by cutting costs where you can. Once you've identified the list, pick out your top two to three most important goals. Try not to pick more than three financial goals for the year to avoid feeling overwhelmed and becoming more likely to quit halfway through. As an example, let's say we have two main goals, paying off an existing car loan and saving up for an emergency fund. Step 3. Make those general goals into SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Each goal you set should be specific enough so it's clear what you're working towards. The goal should be measurable so that it can be quantified and you'll know whether you actually achieved it or not. Every goal should also be achievable so you can ensure you're capable of accomplishing the entire goal within those 12 months. Your goals should also be relevant to you, your financial goals, and your life. This is a bit more open to interpretation, but the basic idea is to think about your own personal situation and the main goals we looked at earlier to ensure the final goals you set are in line with them. Finally, you want to make sure your goals are time-bound. Basically, you want to assign a timeline to each goal to set how long you think it'll take to achieve. This also relates back to making your goals achievable. You want to make sure you'll be able to achieve your goal within the time frame you provide. You should also determine if you'll be working towards all of your goals simultaneously or if you'll prioritize one over the other. For example, if we do have some money in our savings account that we could dip into in case of an emergency, we may want to prioritize paying the car loan off first, since paying it off faster will help us pay less interest. Once we've paid the loan off, we can then move on to saving up for the emergency fund. 
At this point, our sample goals will be save up $6,000 to cover two months of living expenses as an emergency fund within the last eight months of the year and pay off the last $3,000 on my car loan within the first four months of the year. Both goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Step four, determine how you'll reach your goals. We've gone over what we want to do. Now we need to look at how we're going to do it. These are the action steps we'll take to achieve our goals. For saving up money or paying off debt, the question is how am I going to come up with this money? For lowering overall spending, the question is what expenses am I going to reduce or cut completely? If your goal is to earn more money, the question is how am I going to facilitate earning that extra money? There are two ways to achieve your financial goals. Either cutting your expenses, like cutting down on what you spend on takeout, shopping, streaming, or rent, or earning more money, like getting a raise, working overtime, getting a new job with better pay, starting a side hustle, starting a part-time job, renting a room in your home, or selling items for cash. With either of our sample goals, we'll be looking at putting away $750 a month towards our savings fund. So we'll either need to cut back on our expenses by $750 a month, earn an extra $750 a month in income, or a combination of the two. Let's also assume we currently don't have any extra money within our monthly budget to allocate to the fund. Let's first make some cuts to our budget. We'll lower our dining expenses from $350 to $100 a month by eating out less and opting for takeout over dining in or delivery. We'll cancel our membership to Uber Eats, which saves about $100 a year or a little over $8 a month. We'll also cancel our Amazon Prime membership to save $139 a year or about $11 a month and our Walmart Plus subscription, which costs $98 a year, which saves about $8 a month and go with free shipping by waiting to make purchases until we need $35 worth of items at either of those stores. We'll also plan to switch our gym membership from LA Fitness, which charges $39.99 a month and $59 for the annual fee for their cheapest tier, to the lowest tier at Planet Fitness, which currently charges a $49 annual fee, $1 to start, and $10 a month for membership, which will save us about $369 a year or around $30 a month. We'll also switch our car insurance to a cheaper company, pay the six-month coverage up front to save on the monthly service charge when paying by month, and or adjust our coverage or deductible a bit to save an extra $43 a month. Those changes will save us about $350 a month. For the remaining $400 a month, we'll look to increase our income. $400 a month breaks down to $100 a week in extra income. Maybe we'll start a side hustle to earn some extra income, like dog walking or online tutoring. Or perhaps we'll do a few extra hours of overtime a week at our current job. Or maybe we have some items at home that we don't need and can sell off to make some extra money. Some other options to earn a little extra money without doing much work include using cashback credit cards and keeping your money in a high yield savings account. If you currently don't earn cashback rewards from credit cards, the Wells Fargo Active Cash Card will earn you 2% cashback on your purchases. So if you spend $1,000 a month on products and services that you can pay for by credit card, then you could earn $20 a month in cashback on those purchases, which you can apply directly to your credit card statement. If you also open a high yield savings account, many of the better accounts will earn you over 4% APY, like with the Discover High Yield Savings Account and the American Express High Yield Savings Account, which both have no monthly fees, balance minimums, or requirements for direct deposit. If you're saving up a total of $9,000 over the year or $750 a month, you could earn a few dollars by the end of month one and over $30 in month 12 alone just by moving the money you save up to that high yield account as soon as you get it every month based on the current APY for those two accounts. I'll link to some videos on cashback credit cards and high yield savings accounts towards the end of this video. Step five, track your progress towards your goal and check in regularly. It's important to make sure you stay on track when working towards your goals throughout the year. A good rule of thumb is reviewing your progress towards each financial goal once a month. A good way to keep track of this is using a spreadsheet to track your progress towards your goals so that you can keep a log of each time you contribute to your goals each month. Make sure you also set a calendar reminder for the check-in. It's also best to keep a flexible mindset once you've set your goals. Things change, and during the year, some situations may arise that make achieving your original goals too difficult or even not necessary, like an unexpected expense, cutbacks on hours at work, or a major change in your life or priorities. So if you find that things have changed, you can adjust your goals a bit to reflect that. It's also okay if you don't end up achieving every single one of your goals. It's best to try to achieve at least 80% of the goals you set, whether that's 80% of each goal or 80% of your overall goals. 
So with our example, we'll want to check in at the end of each month to make sure we're reaching our goal of putting away $750 a month by lowering our monthly expenses and earning more income every month. And if it's proving to be too unrealistic after a few months, we may want to lower the amount a bit. Let me know in the comments, what are your financial goals for the new year? If you're interested in even more ways to save money, you can check out this video here, where we go over some of the best cashback credit cards that have no annual fees. And you can also check out this video, where we go over some of the best high yield savings accounts on the market. If you found this video helpful, it'd be a huge help if you could click like and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really helps get our videos out to more people to help them save money, and it's completely free. If you want to be notified when we post new videos, be sure to also click the notification bell as well. Thanks for watching and see you next time.